Okay, we're going to start off our morning meeting today by sharing how we're feeling. Um, like we talked about yesterday, we're not going to do clouds anymore. We're going to do rocks today. And we went over three types of rocks that we've learned about earlier this year. Who remembers one of the names of our rocks? Sadie? Sedimentary. In the classroom today, you saw what our typical morning meeting looks like. It's usually between 20 to, uh, to 30 minutes, depending on what all we want to present there. Okay, what was the last rock we talked about yesterday? Mine? Metamorphic. Metamorphic rock. Wonderful. Thank you. In the morning meeting, I tried to do uh, two things. One, I tried to give the students an opportunity to um, process their emotions and to kind of invite the classroom community into that um, so that we can kind of tackle those things throughout the course of the day. Um, and that's something that they've had to learn over the course of the year, how to first express their emotions, then also how to respond to other people's emotions in a productive and appropriate way. And the second thing that I try to do in the morning meeting is kind of frame where the rest of the day is, is going. What was Igneous Rock? Sadie? Um, Igneous Rock was, was a type of magma that was, in, it was made out of... Something that I like to do whenever I can is find ways to integrate, um, especially vocabulary from other subjects into our morning meeting um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's because a question that I think is on a lot of teachers' minds is how do I find time to have like a meaningful morning meeting. Rocks. Okay, so it's any magma that's hard and Google. Look at all the active listening. Um, and so really, the way that I can preserve that academic time um, that we always seem to run short on, but also really focus on that social emotional piece, which is um, critical, is to bring them together. How might you feel if you say today that you are an igneous rock? Yes, Alonzo? So, since, uh, sand and old And so, by doing that, the kids are able to review what they know about the different types of rocks in this example um, and also kind of make a personal connection to it. Do we have another thought for igneous rock? Ben? That's allowing them to practice with figurative language. It's allowing them to practice expressing their emotions. Ooh. Everybody go, ooh. Ooh. Um, but it's also a way of giving, uh, just building the synapses around that vocabulary so that they have it at the ready and it's not just another word, but it's a word that has meaning and it's a word that's been applied to them. Emily? Um, it could mean that you've been through a lot to get to the point where you are ready to talk about it. And that rock goes through a lot to become a rock. Very thoughtful. One of the biggest challenges in creating the classroom environment that we have now is equipping them with the vocabulary. So before I could even really integrate the science like I did today and use that vocabulary as a way of um, communicating the students' emotions, uh, we first had to learn what those emotions are. Think right now how you're doing today. See which one of those rocks you kind of match up with. And we're going to share. And I'm just going to say the name of a rock. And if that describes you right now, you can go ahead and stand up. All right, if you are an igneous rock today, go ahead and stand up. My emotion for it is excited because of Part of that is just providing uh, an environment that's educational, like having the, the posters that show the different facial expressions and emotions. But I wanted to go deeper than that. So a uh, community theme of our classroom is um, being a superhero in disguise. And we started off with some, some key texts in which the characters seem to be something other than they really were in the end. And how the only way that people know who you truly are are by your actions and by your words. And so the discussion that followed that was that each of our students are, are good people and they're wonderful people and they're friends that the people that we want to be friends with um, but if we don't act and speak in a certain way we're hiding that part of ourselves from the rest of the world and i also miss audrey because every time audrey walks in this door she always has a giant spell on her face yes, sure. thank you both of you that a uh, very good report um audrey what would you like to say some of the challenges that I had to overcome as I was learning to, and still am learning to overcome, as I implemented these strategies, 
really had an origin in learning to take students where they're coming from. We're going to be going to our seats. So the students come from very different places, um, even within the same classroom, and all of that that they bring with them, um, if not handled in like a delicate and respectful way and in a way that affirms that student, can really impact a student in a negative way. Um, because if they're willing to really open that up to you, you kind of have to know what's the next step. How can we um, show the others in our classroom community who we are and what we're dealing with, but also in a way that allows me to move on and be productive with my day.